Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Nearly Midnight Movie Chat. It's currently 8 p.m. on the 17th of May, 2021. It's tax day, which is why I'm early tonight. I have to give government its money. And of course, tonight we're going to be talking about this really crazy situation with Jason Keelar coming out of this new AT&T Warner Media Discovery thing. So let's get into it right now. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing? Matt Jarbo here, Three Buck Theater. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, but wait, hold, hold, wait, hold on. Hold on. What is this right here? <music> Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting breaking news here tonight over on Three Buck Theater's nearly midnight movie chat. Apparently, Walter Hamada is on his way out. He's currently seeking any kind of employment he can, finding feelers to anyone who will be asking, is Hamada Burger closing? We don't quite know. But apparently right now he's afraid. And he doesn't know if he's been told he's gone yet. Many at Warner Brothers are currently scared shitless. AT&T wasn't happy with him. The new gods, the trench, all considered, all deemed failures. At AT&T, this of course is coming in from YouTube scooper, uh, and my friend Mikey Sutton just given to me live right before the show began. But the Hamada Burger closing and the trinity of the downfall of Warner Brothers as seen on the screen could be coming to an end. So, yeah, that's actually literally something that was just told to me by Mikey right before going live. So that was kind of fun. And, of course, what we have uh, to go on here again, take everything with a speculative grain of salt. Right, It's a rumor. We don't know yet necessarily what's going to be happening with Walter Hamada, but apparently, according to Mikey Sutton, he is currently putting out feelers as a way to seek other employment. Whether or not that's going to happen, I don't know. I don't know if the guy has a lot of goodwill in Hollywood after the last couple years of managing DC films. He's got a couple wins, a couple not so good wins, and then some bad press. So we're going to have to wait and see what's going on. Tonight, of course, is going to be a very interesting discussion nonetheless. Uh, so let's just kind of take a quick dive into the chat here. We already got 40 people. That's fantastic. Uh, Geeks says, hey, hope you're doing well. Surprise for an early stream. I'm not out doing deliveries tonight. I put my kids down and I wanted to get out in front of Enosh streaming because generally he goes like five or six hours and, you know, sucks the air out of the room. All right. Garrick here says, do you think HBO Max is going to merge with Discovery Plus? Um, You know what? I think in some areas, yes. Right, kind of like how in the UK you've got Disney Plus and Star, and it's Star is part of Disney Plus, but here in the US you've got Disney and you've got Hulu. I think in some areas HBO Max is going to migrate into merge into Discovery Plus. If they try to charge me two tiers for this whole situation, I'm just going to can't. I'm not going to get Discovery Plus. You integrate Discovery Plus into HBO Max, and that will actually keep me around. So it's 15 bucks a month for HBO Max, eight seven eight bucks a month for discovery plus it would be best for them to merge it in uh i don't know if they're going to do that though because there's been a lot of other conversation with the new guy uh zaslov whatever his name is he's talking about how he wants to get uh 400 million people between both platforms and he's like we're already a quarter of the way there really because last I saw, Discovery Plus has only got 15 million users, and HBO Max has got 42.3 million users, and a lot of those are uh, unactivated HBO accounts. So I don't know how much of those I how much of those numbers I believe, and that is something to consider as well. Uh, RJ here says, "What's up, man? Hope you're doing well. I hope I'm doing good. Happy birthday, sir! Saw you got the Xbox One. That's bad. How did you? How, well, you got the Xbox One S, so it's like those are easier to get." Uh, I've passed up like five of them now. I, I want the Series X is what I want. It's what I want. Music Man asked me, how, how how's everything? It's good. Jacob, how, how's it going? Dr. Hockey. Love the name, sir. Uh, Geeks here says, smash that like button. I completely agree. Uh, Andrew Casali says, here comes the realist. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I stand by that too, to be honest with you. I do. All right. Uh, Garrick here saying it seems like telecom companies like AT&T and Verizon aren't the best at running media companies. Why is that? What separates them from Apple and Amazon? Well, Apple and Amazon 
run entirely two different industries. Apple is a technology company that manufactures phones and tablets and computers and other kinds of electronic devices, whereas Amazon specializes in shipping. And so as a result of that, that's their core overhead of those particular companies. Everything else is just, you know, icing on the cake. Whereas AT&T and Comcast, those are telecommunication, telecommunication companies. So they need to have a widespread. They need to reach a lot of people. And uh, the big problem, though, is thinking that you can marry these two concepts together and that your base is going to just come on over because it seems easier. Look, you give everybody 5G Internet at home that uses cellular technology, it will bring the other telecom companies to their knees. And, and you'll get a lot of goodwill and you'll get a lot of love from people on that one. So that's what's going on with that one. Anyway, uh, all right, let's dive on in. We got uh, we got uh, Rel. How's it going, buddy? We got Raya. What up, Raya? How you doing, girl? Uh, <laughs> let's see. RJ here. Look at this. Look at this humble brag and flex, right? This this hum this look at this humble flex right here. I'll watch Matt stream while they play Mass Effect on my new Xbox One. <laughs> that yeah, we get it. You've got the Xbox One S. I've got my face on a t-shirt. I'm not even kidding you. I'm actually got my face on my t-shirt. Um, so anyway, let's kind of play catch up here. <laughs> Gahul with the Karening. Why are you bullying RJ on his birthday? Because <laughs> he's my friend. I'm going to bully him a little bit. Um, all right. Yeah. So Geeks here says, Zazlav did a great interview from uh, CNNBC talking about DC. Uh, can you link that to me on Twitter? Because I do want to take a look at that one here. We'll take a Zazlav uh cn cnbc uh dc films let's take a look because that's quite i mean that's what everyone wants here this is a 20 minute interview i'm not gonna watch a 20 minute interview is there uh is there like a uh uh a thing is there a thing with that i mean can we uh is there like yeah if there's a better if there's a better video clip to watch that's not 20 minutes we could actually look at it um all right let's see Garrick here with the hard hating questions. Is Geeks Plus Gamers the Dave Rubin of the entertainment community? <laughs> if you, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's that's a fair, it's a fair assessment there. That's a fair assessment. Um, all right, let's see here. Doctor Hockey says Zaslev sounds like a Bond villain. Yeah, kind of, a little bit, a little bit here, but uh, he might be good. He might be good, and that of course comes off to today's. Uh, whole thing right today's big big announcement had everything to do with this now this confirmed venture that took everybody by surprise yesterday everyone was like what what's going on you know and you got people out there that are like you know obviously saying like this is good because it's going to like remove the AT&T component with uh you know from the equation and give it to people who know what they're doing which we kind of thought that's what they did by bringing in Jason Keelar uh, as, as the Warner Media CEO in May of 2020. And here it's been a year and they are literally throwing his ass under the bus. They are literally taking Jeff Keelar out and they are treating him like Kenny for the first number of seasons on South Park. They are just, you know, any way they can find a way to shove a knife in his back and to just, and to just beat him down. Uh, that is what they're doing. And, and that is, and that is crazy to me. That is absolutely crazy to me that this is what they're doing. I mean, this is a guy, look, they, they were all, uh, thank you very much, uh, for that one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Great, great, great. We'll, we'll take a look at that here in a second. Um, so yeah, but I mean, like, think about Jason Keillor. They brought him in last year, right? This guy had been, uh, you know, been one of the main guys to bring Hulu to the table, uh, all the way back in the day. And, uh, and you know what? Hulu has grown. It's grown. It has, you know, and I thought HBO max would be pretty good. So people are obviously like AT&T is not happy with HBO max. That's what it boils down to. That's what this whole thing's about. They're not happy with HBO max. The reason why they're not happy with HBO max is because of the pandemic. Like what they are literally mad at HBO max about is not something HBO max can ultimately control. Now, should they have waited to roll out this product until maybe this year? Yeah, to be fair, you want to launch it with something big, the slow rollout over the year, not having Roku for a number of months, not really having anything significant until towards the end of the year 
with Wonder Woman. I know you have like the flight attendant did pretty well and Lovecraft Country did pretty well on there as well. But that also crossed over with HBO. The flight attendant did not But they maybe should have waited, you know, until Christmas time to launch with Wonder Woman as a big way to go about it. But they 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 just kept this whole thing chugging along and hoping that it was going to pick up steam. And the thing is, they've got so many subscribers that are paying for HBO around the world that don't have, that have not activated HBO Max because it isn't available in a number of areas. They really, they really dropped the ball. Now, uh, Gary Kier makes a great point saying, so I guess AT&T bought Time Warner and Direct TV all for nothing. Well, they wanted, no, not all for nothing. They wanted the infrastructure that came with that. That's what they wanted. They wanted the infrastructure that came with that. The problem is that they weren't able to roll it out in a way uh, that a lot of people really felt was going to be profitable for the company. And that's their own damn fault, to be fair. That's their own damn fault. They uh, they, they, they kind of bit off more than they can chew. And the fact that theaters aren't open really is going to impact it, right? This has nothing to do with like Snyder, which I keep, I keep bringing him up because I keep seeing his name brought up. I'm literally, I'm telling you, we had people going full Q-Borg today uh, trying to say that Zach knew what was going on because he had mentioned in an interview that cooler heads will prevail and that that was coded messaging for Zack Snyder himself to be aware, to be aware of what is happening and, and to be in the know of what's going on and everything else. Like that is what people were saying today, which is why when it comes to the DC non people, the people that will believe any rumor that comes along, doesn't matter where it originates because uh, he want them to trust the plan. I'm calling them cuborgs at this particular point. Uh, so it's that. Uh, it's that. And I agree with Music Man here. I hate what they are doing to Jason. He's a good guy. Yeah, that's true. And I've seen, but I've seen today, Snyder Cut fans also attacking Keelar, saying he's not, he was, that he was always anti Snyder, saying that Keelar was always against everything, that he hates Zack Snyder. I mean, all of this stuff to try to justify the fact that the Snyder Cut is dead that, that not that it was dead but that that was it that was the closure that's what's going on and it's uh it's pretty bad now gary here makes a great point he says here that it could be worse hbo max could be quibi didn't even last half a year that's true but uh roku is bringing all of that content over i believe tomorrow or today all of that content made its way so that is pretty cool uh, I'm going to be looking forward to watching some of those shows again, and maybe more people can finally get the way to do it, can finally experience that because the way Quibi was set up by not having um, the ability to watch it on your home television or on your computer or anywhere that you wanted to watch it outside of your phone damaged it. You know, I enjoyed sitting on the toilet, taking a dookie while watching a six minute episode of something. But that's what it was designed for. But I also wanted to watch it on my computer and I wanted to watch it on my TV and I wanted to watch it in other ways on my console or something. You know, give me the option to watch it where I want to watch it and I will watch it when I poop because I'm an honest person and I'm telling you guys these sort of things because that's what this show is. Anyway, uh, now Ocelot here does say that Jason let everyone and his company down. How? How? He made bold choices that made him kind of like persona non grata around Hollywood. That is until Godzilla v. Kong started doing well for over $400 million worldwide. When's the last time you heard that number come out of anything other than Demon Slayer, RJ? Because I know you're going to say it. All right? I know you're going to say Demon Slayer, but Demon Slayer, guys, no, I know you're going to say it. We're talking about non-anime properties, okay? Uh, but like big tentpole things here. And the idea there is that it did well. And that actually then people came back around going, oh, well, maybe this day and date release thing isn't that bad. But today, today we're learning that Dune is now no longer going day and date to, uh, to HBO Max. That Dune is going to go to theaters for 45 days and then it's going to go to streaming, which is kind of going to be the standard for a while. Now, what does that mean for Suicide Squad? What does that mean for The Matrix 4? You know, what does that mean for other movies that are going to be coming out that were promised to us subscribers at no additional cost, mind you, to watch on HBO Max, right? I mean, there's a lot there now. Now, now you can honestly say that because of these changes 
and don't get me wrong that's generally speaking i'm and i'm as much as i want to watch a lot of these movies at home the the, the, the change there is actually a really good thing because the change there indicates that what we're getting is back to normal you know like i went to costco today and like half the people weren't wearing masks i don't believe half of those people were vaccinated but people just want to get back to normal and so if the studios are going to start putting more movies back in theaters that's a good sign for the industry bad sign for hbo max because that was their big controversial play and they didn't even stick with that they they spun off the company halfway through the year a year after it launched how many people now are going to look at HBO Max and maintain their subscription? I don't know. I don't know. If you're not combining it with Dis with Discovery Plus, then I'm not going to pay dual price. You know, if they're going to go to the ad tier uh, supported model, which is probably what now. Here's the thing. Here's the thing too. Without the premium content, without the uh, without those direct movies that come, why am I going to pay 15 bucks a month or something? I don't mind watching a few commercials. Hell, I make my money on advertising for the most part or super chats that you guys give here. So it's like, why, why not drop down to that ad supported model? Why pay 15 bucks a month? That's, that is how much is that a year? That's a uh, $180 a year. I could save myself because I was doing my taxes today and I was adding up all the cost of my streaming services, right? all the costs of my streaming services. And I, I haven't, I have a lot, not all of them, but I have a lot. So I'm like, damn, I spent a lot of money on that shit. Cool. Now I'm just going to cut it out of my budget. HBO max is literally first on the chopping block because this company now has no direction. It never really did have much of a direction to be honest with you. So there's there. Uh, Ocelot here does not to say, I think anyone could see that Jason is in the wrong in this. How, uh, how? Uh, you know, okay. So real quick here, uh, update. Apparently Warner media's head of communications, uh, Jonna Fuentes says that Dune will still release in theaters and on HBO max on the same day. Yeah, no, nah, it won't. It won't. I, I trust deadlines reporting. When is honest to God, when has deadline ever really been wrong? Nah, they're going to, cause here's the thing right now. They want people to think they, they look Keelar Keelar, you know, knew he was out of a job. I thought he was going to stay, to be honest with you, because it just kind of felt like like the you know they have a lot to manage. They would need somebody, but no, uh, Zaslav is going to be taking all that over, and he's kind of known as a bit of a spendthrift, um, and he's a guy who likes rapid change. If something isn't working, no wonder him and AT and T got along just fine. Do you guys did you guys read the story of how the whole thing came to be? Right, John Stanky and uh, David Zaslav were uh, were just there texting one Saturday, like what's up bro how you doing bro yeah how's business business good no bro no not good bro i want to talk about it bro and then it's like on the phone for a couple hours like this is what we could do to make our company better and then now we're in this new world where this company and the the the, the, the thing is like the you know looking up here of what are, what are it all gonna be i have uh some image here there we go um, you know, it's showing us that there's going to be quite a bit, right? You've got, uh, I mean, there's a lot there that's on discovery plus, by the way, if they combine them together, it's going to work out. I mean, with HBO max, they're bringing over rooster teeth, Warner brothers, HBO, CNN, Cinemax, although Cinemax is basically dead. TNT, TBS, adult swim, Turner sports. And uh, you got to love it. DC. Oh down there at the bottom all the way down there at the bottom is dc but discovery plus is bringing in uh discovery food network hgtv tlc the science channel animal planet that's always big who doesn't love animals uh id tv that to me is the big one because it's informative murder porn is what it is it's informative murder porn and people out there love their informative murder porn i'm a big fan of true crime so for me i'm like yeah you you include that deal where i can get my you know my joseph was it uh, uh kenda my kenda files right i can get that i'd be happy speaking of that the only thing out of this merger i want to see because keep in mind, with, with David Zaslav at the lead of this, right? The guy who oversees nothing but unscripted reality television, which is all scripted, by the way. 
Nothing you see ever on television is not scripted. I talked about this last night too. I'm just going to reiterate this for the new people. Nothing you ever see is real. Ever. Keeping up with the Kardashians. Fake as shit. Paris Hilton. Her show. Fake as crap. Sex tape was real. But the everything else is pretty bad. Uh, and on this particular situation, this is what we're looking at. Is the, is just it's not a lot. You know, it's like he's all unscripted. So what he's going to do is he's going to want to find ways to bring that kind of very inexpensive but very profitable type of content using these IPs. What are they going to do? Now, the only thing I want to see, and I pitched this on Twitter earlier, and I think it would be amazing, would be if they did a, a, a dramatized Gotham Files show where it was Batman taking us through all of his major cases. And it's just and it's just telling the story of how Batman, the world's greatest detective, cracked the case. You know, and it's Kevin Conroy voicing old Batman. I'm going to tell you about the time I stopped the Joker for the uh, 220th time. Alfred was uh, a bit peeved at me at the moment because I hadn't been able to stop all the crime in Gotham. But still, that murdered body left a mark, a mark on my soul. <laughs> or something like that. I mean, any, honestly, that'd be kind of cool, to be fair. That'd be kind of chill. Uh, but this is, I mean, this is just kind of crazy stuff right now, right? All of this, all of this stuff is nuts. Uh, Kat, <laughs> Katsuka here says, I'd watch the hell out of that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, I'd be okay with that. I think that'd be pretty funny. Uh, go cool here. What do you say here? You know what's real? The hottest show of the season, Young Rock on NBC. is. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, that was good that was funny right and apparently people like the batman idea right that'd be pretty cool uh <laughs> ocelot here is like what you're describing is a game arkham city yeah or like arkham origins mostly but yeah yeah fuck it right tell me the story of how batman on on christmas night every everyone be christmas eve Christmas Eve Gotham and like Black Mask had taken over the city. And then it's just how Batman brought down Bat Mask. Is this Black Mask? Is this going to be the Batman? Like, I prefer if it was like drunk history or it's just like belligerently talking about this shit, right? And getting the other side of the story, like having Batman and like Harvey Dent and they're both just shit faced and they're both talking about what happened. Uh, you know what? Call it like, uh, call it like drunk, like what drunk Bat Cave or whatever the hell it is or something like that, you know? And like do a mock-up of that, but they just have that to be funny. I mean, like if you're looking for fun and inventive ways to like really make the brands kind of pop with the younger generation, that kind of irreverent humor could work. And if and if anyone from from the newly formed Warner Media Discovery Company that we don't have a name for yet is listening to this, uh, I am a writer producer, so I do come up with funny concepts, and there are things like that. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Uh, Raf Football says hello. I'm a French YouTuber. Super chats, YouTube analytics, it's okay or no, I have the same problem. Yeah, man, I, I can't, if anyone's giving me super chats for one tonight, I haven't seen them. So that's whatever. Uh, but also the last couple of days, the last three days on my end, my analytics, none of the super chats are popping up. Uh, none of that revenue that you guys have been very graciously donating to the channel while I stream is, is being reported. And it's uh, YouTube's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sounds like YouTube. Uh, anyway. <laughs> So uh, let's see here. Sammy says rebrand Warner Brother Warner Media to Warner, rebrand HBO Max to Warner Plus. Get rid of the standard HBO, incorporate Discovery in the app, and release it worldwide. Here's the problem with that, though, man. It's going to be HBO Max because they've already branded HBO Max worldwide. It's already well known worldwide. Dropping the name right now, I think, is a bad idea. Now, in HBO has already had that problem when they had HBO, HBO Go, and HBO Now, and you're like, which fucking plan do I have? I don't know. I, don't, I you know so it's it's one of those issues where you just you just you really have no idea. Uh so it's it's going to be kind of fascinating uh to see what's going on there. Um H Bart's here. Yeah, I think I think this is a super chat and I'm not getting anything. So super chats are down. Um I I you know that's really really lame. Um let me see here. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Apparently that's down. Um if anyone would like to, uh, we could do, hold on, streamlabs.com 
Um, let me just get the get that. I can I can drop that in there, and that way I can see it. Um, and also, YouTube doesn't take their thirty percent, so uh, that's the other issue with that too. I, I I don't know what the hell is going on today. It's quite frustrating to be honest with you, because uh, this is how I earn my living right now, and it's like, come on, guys, you're messing with me. Uh, but the thing is, YouTube. What else? What else do you effing expect, right? Uh, it's never gonna be uh, never be good. Okay. Let's see, alert box here. What's my alert? Hold on. Um, oh, darn it. Now I'm off track. Where the hell am I? Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so Streamlabs, here, I'll just post it in there. Um, streamlabs.com forward slash three buck theater. There we go. That is uh, that is the uh, the link. If anyone wants to tip on that one right there, I can see that um and otherwise i'm just not seeing um yeah i'm not really seeing anything even on even on Streamlabs, just nothing nothing is popping in with this so that, that don't super chat definitely don't do that um do the stream do stream labs i think that's just better for right now i'll be able to see it um yeah so okay well i did see it here uh, all right. Yeah. Well, I see, I see it on the page here. Anyway, super, uh, H Bart's here. $2. Thanks, man. It says Zach owns AT and T M S T T. What does M S T T mean? Um, <laughs> anyway, let's get back to it. I kind of totally lost my, lost my thing there. Um, no, I am having fun with it, but it's also like, this is kind of how, if I take a night off of work of not driving, this is kind of how I supplement. So it is, it is, you know, it's a business thing. Kahul. You'll, you'll get there one day um all right so here's the thing i want to talk about when it comes to the uh when it comes to the whole thing with keelar because what we're talking about here is uh this whole crazy hold on let's make sure this is up um yeah this whole crazy thing about where damn it where is that okay so here's what we know walt uh warner media head were reportedly negotiating his exit and this is a big deal Usually they put these people on like a three-year cycle. They put these people on a three-year plan, a uh, three-year contract. He's been in it for a year. So if he's already trying to negotiate his exit, he knows that things are predominantly screwed right now. Uh, so it says here that Jason Keelar, the CEO of Warner Media, is reportedly stepping down from the company in the wake of the AT&T announcements to spin Warner Media off to its own division and merge it with Discovery. Keelar was one of the founders of Hulu, served on the board of directors of DreamWorks Animation, and was an executive at Amazon. He assumed the role, the CEO, uh, at Warner Media on May 1st, 2020, and was behind some of their bigger decisions during COVID-19, like the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League, and the announcement that all Warner Brothers films in 2021 would be released theatrically and on HBO Max the same day. According to the New York Times, Keelar has hired a legal team to negotiate his departure, this report states that Keelar was kept in the dark about the upcoming deal with Discovery. Warner Media is now reportedly set to be run by David Zaslav. Uh, now, while Keelar's decision to release all of Warner Brothers films and HBO Max as well as Cedars may have helped films like Godzilla vs. Kong and Mortal Kombat reach a wider audience, it soured things among Warner Brothers' top talent. Filmmakers like Nolan, Judd Apatow, and M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong have all expressed their feelings about Warner Brothers putting their films on HBO Max. It is seen as not only hurting the theatrical exhibition, but going back on a trust the filmmakers had with the studios. So that's basically what it is, is that he made a very bold move that ultimately worked, that ultimately worked to benefit the studio, to benefit the company, to navigate it in a very interesting and dynamic way during a, a once in a century pandemic and, and, you know, I get it. I get people are upset. I understand that. The reality of it is, though, is that he was doing what he felt he needed to do to save the, the company that he works for, the, the company that he's in charge of, to save the jobs of the people that he oversees. And they're, they're throwing his ass under the bus as a result of this, as an absolute result of this. Uh, it's just, uh, it's crazy. Um, now, Ocelot here, I, and I kind of keep going, you know, uh, it says here, what Jason did benefited no one but his own interests. No, his interests were the company. His interests were HBO Max. He was legitimately brought in to oversee Warner Media. That was going to be Warner Brothers Picture Group, Warner, uh, you know, HBO Max, Warner Brothers Television, Warner Brothers Home Video. 
those are the things that he is like overseeing part. Well, maybe not the home video part, but like anything like, you know, that's going to go direct to consumer, which would be HBO max at this point, essentially, that's a lot of what he was overseeing. Those are, those are the kind of things that he was up to. And so again, him working within the pandemic, I don't know what caused effectively the slow ass rollout. I don't know what caused it to not go, uh, and, uh, and, and, and be and, and be out now. I don't know what caused that, but that is probably something that's pretty bad. Um, Gory here says he threw theaters under a freight train. No, he didn't, man. No, he didn't. Movies, these movies still came to theaters. Here's the thing, man. People didn't go see them. Spiral is a Lionsgate movie that opened with 8.9 million. It's a Lionsgate movie. It's a Saw movie. It's a horror movie. 8.9 million people are not there yet. But films like Godzilla vs. Kong that brought in a lot more people, those are the kind of tentpole films that people are going to go back to go and see. If anything, Warner Brothers here was attempting to reboot and reignite the box office. They put Tenet out there last year. They were the canary in the coal mine while Disney twiddled its thumbs over Mulan, which they ultimately released on Disney Premier Access not long after. And a lot of their movies have dropped on Disney Plus after that. Soul, which won Best Animated Feature, was on Disney Plus Christmas Day. If anything, Keelar and, and, and the people at Warner's, they were trying to keep theaters alive. They were the only ones out there thinking of ways to keep it going. Universal's like, we're just going to put trolls on, on, a, on PVOD and we're going to do this with The Hunt and a bunch of other, like, you know, Visible Man and shit like that. And they did that a whole bunch and a bunch of other movies just went digital, which is fine. But you, you cannot sit there and say that they threw theaters under the bus when they were the, like, quite frankly, like the only ones trying to do anything to keep this shit going, but also trying to protect their interests at the same time. So, I mean, the thing is, okay, I don't see, it's not that Jason wasn't that good of an executive. He did his, his actions, they had their long-term consequences. He was playing the long game as well as the short game, but mostly the long game. Like, what can we do to serve our customers and our clients now? And what can we do to build trust and establish them as future customers down the road? It was bold. It was, it was, it was, it was brash and it was amazing. In my opinion, it was outside the box thinking that a lot of people out there were just too afraid to ever truly dive into. So, you know, all right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I just got, uh, there we go. Oh, God damn it. I got, Mikey, can you send me that link again, but just not have the amp in front of it? That'd be fantastic. Let me try to copy the link here. So Mikey Sutton sent me, um, someone had copied. There was this article about that Variety had put out that was all about the, uh, the, uh, the hatchet. And, uh, okay, let me just... Let me just do that one there. All right. Uh, about, okay, there we go. All right. Let me just bring, let me just bring this up. Where, where is that? Where is that? There we go. Okay. So this is an article that was dropped earlier. This is when I, I put this up on the, um, I put this up on what's it called? Uh, the thumbnail with the, him in the Kenny industry, right? Or the him, him in the, uh, in the Kenny. Uh, where's that at there? All right. The, this one right here. Okay. So when it's, um, you know, we can see here, oh my God, they killed Keelar, AT&T uh, backstabs its very own hatchet man. And this is something that they put, they put behind a damn stupid paywall. So we know now um, what that is going to be. And uh, let me see here. Okay, there we go. And all right. So this is what the article says. So I'm reading this for the first time. Thank you, Mikey, for sending it to me. Just get a quick drink here. All right. Leave it to the company that brought you Game of Thrones to be briefly led by an executive who lived by the sword and died by the sword. Jason Keelar, the executive CEO, John Stanky, entrusted with cutting down the ranks of Warner Media and beheading some of the TV's in TV industry's most respected figures in the process. Just got a taste of his own medicine. As the New York Times first reported on Monday, he's negotiating his own exit from the company in the wake of its announcement to join forces with Discovery, a deal for which he was reportedly kept out of negotiations. 
That's a fascinating thing. He's the CEO of Warner Media and the CEO of AT and T. His boss was like kept him in the dark. That that's cold blooded. Now, the schadenfreude flowing through Hollywood is surely at peak levels today considering the ill will that came Keelar's way in the wake of his audacious decision to blindside the creative community with his move last year to release day and date Warner Brothers' entire film slate on HBO Max and in theaters. Here, let me just, look, Warner Brothers has been talking about this since 2013. The Hangover Part 3 was legitimately floated at the time as being a day and date release to be released on digital and to be released in theaters on the exact same time. They've been talking about this now for the better part of a decade. This is nothing that is new and everyone seems to freaking ignore it. Everyone seems to throw Keelar under the bus for this one. And what he was doing, what he did was he he brought back something. He, he did something that nobody literally had the balls to do. Nobody had the cojones to do this shit during a pandemic to try to see if it would boost something. And it worked. Maybe not as well as they wanted it to. Fine, I'll grant you that one. But it was bold, bold maneuvering. And I respect that. I respect that quite a bit. And I think he was also, again, a pro Snyder guy. One of the only pro Snyder guys. You know, and, and people just kind of throw him under the bus today. So the question then becomes, did Stanky truly support Keelar for his audacious move? which he was clearly brought in to make in the first place, or did AT&T underestimate the blowback that would come from bringing in a bold visionary unafraid to make enemies in pursuit of the right strategic goal? Even Variety here with this opinion piece, with this bold hyperbolic language, they're agreeing with what I was saying. Okay, going on here. It's not. It's hard to not read the combination of Keelar's exit and Discovery CEO David Zaslav's ascendance as a referendum on the proper media business management. It's both a repudiation of the Silicon Valley bred move fast and break things ethos Keelar live by and a renewed appreciation of the steadier stylings of traditional mogul like Zaslav brings to the table. You cannot expect the industry to change during a time when things are breaking around them without their control, without there being some kind of trailblazer, some kind of bull in the China shop here. Yes, I understand that, you, you know, the, the steadier hand, it does, it, it soothes, it, it just, it soothes the shareholders. Oh, it's okay, Daddy. Daddy David's got you. Oh, it's got you. It's fine. Go to bed. Give me your money, but go to bed. That's all it is. They're just, they're just, people are afraid. The shareholders are afraid. That's all, that's all it is. Now, just imagine what a distinguished, discarded Warner Media alums like Kevin Riley. And Robert Greenblatt are thinking right now, not to mention thousands of other lower ranking employees who got the shaft. Karma meet Keelar, Keelar comma. Now that's cold, that's mean, but it's true. It is true. I'll grant it that one. Uh, as come downs come in Hollywood, you can't get uh, one that more accurately reaffirms the, uh, the aphorism. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. Just last Friday, Keelar was treated to a, fairy, a fairly glowing profile in the Wall Street Journal the kind of story that crowns executives who stay in their jobs for a long time to come. His future never seems so assured. His maverick ways never more validated. And now here we are standing around the chalk outline of Keelar's body, <laughs> our jaws on the floor, registering the kind of shock that Kenny friends once greeted his repeated deaths on South Park. One of the marquee TV's attractions on HBO max. Yeah, that it's, that's, that's true. Uh, if there's anyone who can uh, understand the hostility Keelar is facing in Hollywood, it's Jeff Zucker, who made a share of enemies back during his final years at NBC Universal, which makes it all the more juicy that now Keelar's fate is clear. The attention can turn to CNN's leader. I don't know who gives a shit about CNN. Uh, it's possible that AT&T and Discovery were deluded enough to think they could keep Keelar in the fold, which was never going to happen. It's hard to believe there's any scenario where the um, where the trium virate of Zaslav, Zucker, and Keelar rule coexist. Well, uh, yeah, that is true. That is true. So here's a, sum a summation of the conventional wisdom on the plaque, uh, on the palace intrigue at play here. Plaque, geez, if I could read. Zucker's previous decision to exit CNN was at least partially influenced by his aversion to Keelar, who reportedly made some key decisions impacting Warner Media's news brand without consulting Zucker. Nevertheless, Keelar has been publicly supportive of Zucker. Meanwhile, if there's any executive Zucker doesn't take a shine to, it's Zaslav. They once worked together for many years at NBC Universal, but have kept their relationship strong from the close distance of their respective Hampton properties. If anyone has a shot at getting Zucker to stay on to oversee CNN, 
uh, where he took the brand to new heights, navigating the rough waters of the Trump years. It's Zaslev. It's, but even that Trump years are over, man. And CNN is dropping in ratings because that type of game don't fly no more. So they need an overhaul, complete overhaul. And this might, I don't want to, you know, the term monopoly has been tossed around a bit today. I don't believe that at all. Anyway, so, okay. So it just kind of says here, right? Uh, you know, uh, it's just, it's just, it's admitting that they're throwing him under the bus. It's admitting that they're getting rid of Keelar and that Keelar, uh, you know, he's got, uh, he's kind of screwed. He's kind of screwed. Uh, I agree here. Nobody gives a shit about CNN. Yeah. I don't even know why this, I mean, I know it's a brand. I know they make money on it. I get, I get all that. Um, but it's kind of ridiculous here, but anyway. Okay. So, so, um, you know, didn't Don Lemon lose his show? Well, he didn't leave the company. I don't know what he did. I remember I, I was out Friday night when I saw that announcement drop. Everyone's like, oh my God, Don Lemon's quitting CNN. And I'm like, who the fuck watches Don Lemon? You know, I don't watch Don. I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an MSNBC nightly kind of guy. All right. I'll admit that. I listen to MSN. I like Brian Williams. All right. Uh, now, Ambassadorial Wing here says, Keelar will find a new home and I would bet he'll get a pound of flesh from warner Brothers, yeah he'll get a lot of money if, he, if they negotiate the right exit you know if they negotiate the right exit he's going to get a fair amount of cash that, that is 100 percent true uh that is definitely not going to change and that should be really fascinating to see uh, how that all goes down when it finally does uh go down and so hopefully we'll know something soon enough on that one um but uh but okay so Let's take a look here at this uh, Zaz Live interview that I was sent because I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know what he's going to say. But let's uh, let's take a look anyway. Media side, but that we're probably the best media company in the world with the greatest IP, the most iconic IP. You know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Sex in the City, Entourage, uh, Game of Thrones, and th this idea of a full-on global IP company and the ability to to take. 71% of, of the AT&T shareholder base and together uh, really assure that, uh, that Warner together with Discovery will be a, a really strong global force. But also that the, the vision for John and I was the number one telecommunications uh, company in the world and the number one media company in the world. Okay. So they, they want to... They want the entertainment and they want the media, which means CNN. So CNN is going to get a big play in this. Why? I mean, like, I mean, they've been like third in the rankings, man. Fox is number one and, and you're not going to beat Fox because the CNN's kind of in the middle. Everything is breaking news. Wolf Blitzer is probably long time dead. They just, you know, have him CG'd everywhere. No one cares about that. Like no one cares that like Don Lemon, like leaving his show wasn't like, oh no, Don Lemon. It was like, oh, well, okay. Like it's shocking, but yeah. And then he had to come out and go, whoa, guys, whoa, I'm not leaving. It's okay. I'm still here. It's just something new is happening. Maybe it's in response to this. I have no idea. Either way, I find the whole thing to be kind of alarming uh, and fascinating. Now, Tiger Tank here uh, says this. Why didn't Zaslav mention Harry Potter? I guess that's not making any money for Warner anymore. That's not true. They just got that deal tied up with Universal uh, till 2025, I believe. So that's what they're going to be. Um, but, you know, but he mentioned Batman and Superman and, and Wonder Woman. And, you know, obviously that is pointing to the Snyder Cut. Uh, obviously, that is something that, you know, he's talking about there. But then he followed it up immediately by saying Sex in the City. And then he also said Entourage. So what the fuck? <laughs> Right? Like for one, Sex in the City, it clearly appeals to a very specific demographic. Sex in the City 3 is being made for HBO Max. So they're skipping theaters where one and two went, and one and two turned a profit, by the way. But no Kim Cattrall, and everyone's like, no Samantha. No Samantha. How can you do a Sex in the City movie, but with no Samantha? And they're like, well, we're going to have John Corbett back as Mr. Big, but still, no Samantha. Right? Now, I mean, is everyone going to be a Miranda? Come on, man. I'm not going to lie. I don't necessarily know what I just said. I really don't know what I just said. I kind of get it, but at the same time, it's, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's very bad now. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Hockey here, which one is Don Lemon? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, he's the gay one. Uh, which one is that one? I don't know. I don't know. Throw a dart. No, it's Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon are both gay. And that's great. Uh, <laughs> Let's see here. Andrew says, David is also very aware of the fan reactions to the Snyderverse since the Snyder Cut is redeemed it a lot. Yeah, but dude, they don't care about any of that. This guy, look, here, look, I, Andrew, you're actually the one person I want to uh, I want to address in this, what I'm going to say next, because uh, I don't want it to destroy you, but I think, I think you need to hear it. Zaslav oversees unscripted content. His empire right is all unscripted content meaning that it's cheap to produce it's very cheap to get out there and it yields a very solid return based upon the investment so the thing to consider here is this what you have is you've got a guy who hates to spend money talking about batman superman and wonder woman do you really think they're going to invest a lot of money into it no, they're not. They're not. Because that's not the kind of content that he makes. Why do you think I'm pitching the idea of a Batman detective show that is just a dramatization of some of those stories? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We would get like we'd get like eight, nine seasons off that. Can I pitch that concept to somebody? But I think it's a bad idea. No, it's like, you know, it's, it's again, it's because those are like, he also said Game of Thrones in there as well, which is a big IP. Uh, DC is a big IP. Yeah, that is something that they've been pushing for the last year. He said it strategically, but he also said Entourage, which ended in like 2011, 2012. There was a movie that came out. I mean, like in today's post Me Too cancel culture society, do you really think Entourage is going to have like, it's gonna is gonna live yeah are, like is Vinny and the gang gonna come back are we gonna get a return of jeremy piven's re gold wasn't he canceled for uh for sexual misconduct allegations you know what i mean like uh, right there's something uh, he just he was just saying it to say it i think um okay so rj here i kind of get uh he says here that david zaslav seems eager to get back into the hollywood hollywood studio or in in the studio hollywood again after working at nbc universal i think he may want to act more like an old school studio ceo with an emphasis on streaming maybe but here's the thing and what was i saying about the snyder cut what was i saying about keeping it going what was i saying about all this stuff that i kept getting told didn't matter i kept saying money they don't have the money to do it they don't have the money and i kept getting told no matt you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong they have the money they've got all the money they can totally do it they just got to green light it and then you find out that they're you know a hundred and like 50 billion dollars in debt and they're selling off they're spinning off this company uh to to, to get back 43 billion dollars in order to lo lessen their debt load because they didn't have the money to invest into this content. Look, even they were saying today, even they were saying today here that they're going to be investing. The merged company plans to spend 20 billion a year on new content. How do you think they're going to pay for that $20 billion a year in new content? It's everything you see here on the left-hand side of the damn thing. All of this content that is just so easy to produce and cheap to make. That's what they're going to spend the money on because that's where the money's going to come from. So, uh, let's <laughs> every time, every time this motherfucker cracks me up. He just, he does. Gahul, Gahul really cracks me up. I like Gahul a lot. Uh, it says here, it's talking about, uh, ballers on HBO max and it stars the top movie star in the world. <laughs> Dewey Johnson. There we go. There we go. Don't talk about, yeah. Don't forget about Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Now. Now, Bill here says, and ads, and that's a good point, because if they, if they get into the, uh, to the ad, uh, you know, to the ad supported tier, then that's going to be very fast. They'll make money that way. So it's something there to consider. Uh, it's a lower price. You get ads. It is what it is. Uh, now Ryan here asks, can Jeff Robinoff come back as a new head of Warner brothers? I think they're going to, I think Emmerich is going to be there for a while i don't know i've been told i uh you know what is it um 
I think they're mad at, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. AT and T is basically like mad at HBO max. They see it as a disappointment, which we all kind of saw. We all kind of saw geek series has no mention of Scooby-Doo. I know I'm waiting for an announcement of Scoob too. It's been a year since Scoob came out. We've watched it a bunch on HBO Max. I actually really like that movie now. I hated it at first, but I love it now. I uh, would love to see a sequel to that. So please give me something like that. Um, so yeah, I don't know where things are going to go with this whole pro- with this whole situation. Um, we're going to have to, um, you know, really wait to see uh, how things go. But before, you know, oh, Maychir says here, um, all right, why is Warner Brothers games being split? Yeah, I mean, there's 11 studios there. There's 11 different studios that are being kind of merged around. And I think like Warner Brothers Gaming, you know, Warner Brother Montreal. Um, uh, I like Warner Brother Montreal quite a bit. I loved Arkham Origins. I know I'm kind of in like the minority of that one. But uh, you know what? They've got to focus on this. I don't know what's going to happen with those games. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with with the uh, the Arkham Knights game, right? Or whatever the one coming out. Is it Arkham Knights? Gotham Knights, Gotham Knights, and then the Suicide Squad game coming in from Rocksteady. Who knows what's going to happen with those? I'm sure they're fine because they're already deep into production. So they're not going to mess with that because that's money. They know that DC games make money. Uh, so so there's that. Lord Slug here trolling people in the chat. I hope Hamada stays. Hashtag hail Hamada. Yeah. Uh, but Awesome Andy here says, even Netflix is $150 billion in debt. Uh, why aren't they spinning off? Is Netflix 150 in debt? Uh, let's see. Netflix is debt. Debt right now is, uh, let's see. Um, hold on here. All right. So according to, it's not 150 billion in debt. I think it's like only 15 billion in debt. It's, it's not, it's not 150 billion in debt. I don't know. I don't know if I'm maybe if I'm reading that wrong. There's an article here on CNBC uh, from from a couple months ago. But here's the thing with that, though. What is Netflix's core thing? Streaming. What are they doing? Streaming. What do they branch off into the other day? Oh, they they brought Army of the Dead to theaters, uh, which was awesome, by the way. And, uh, you know, it didn't it didn't crack a million, but it might do well Memorial Day weekend because it's going to really be the only thing going out there. Spiral kind of came and went. Army of the Dead is going to get a lot of positive coverage, I think. And I think people who saw it on H- on Netflix might want to go see it in theaters or vice versa. I might go see it again uh, and still watch it at home. I, I mean, I, I, I'm i waiting for some people to see it so we can have a discussion about it, you know? So I'll have to wait and see on that one there. Um, all right. So, okay. Min Min says here, uh, I'm sorry, but I got to say it. If the grifters on YouTube want a dumpster fire to rag on, this is it. Yeah, no, that's true. That's very true that that would, this would be the dumpster fire to rag on. I completely agree with you, agree with you on that one. Right. Um, but yeah, but, uh, but RJ here has a point. Netflix makes so much revenue. The debt isn't as bad of a load to carry. Most of the debt comes from licensing fees and spending so much to make content. And as Netflix expands and they start to, again, acquire all of this Netflix originals and whatever, uh, that ratio is going to start to slow down because they're going to license fewer content because they're developing content that's theirs that they don't have to lose. And as all these other companies start to fight amongst themselves for some kind of place on the, on the pecking order of streaming services, Netflix is going to have to up their game, which is why they're investing in original properties like Army of the Dead and its two prequels, one being a movie and one being an animated series. So, yeah. That that debt right now ain't that big of a deal, but AT&T is trying to push 5G technology and still run their telecommunication company, which maybe ain't doing that good. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to see. I don't know yet. Uh, Geeks is asking the question here. So is South Park going to be on HBO Max with this new discovery merger? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure they have a contract. They have a, they have a contract and shit. What the hell's going on here? Why the? Okay, there we go. Um, let's see here. Uh, music man asks well, with Netflix, how does a company like that pay off the debt? Um, I'm pretty sure they could probably pay it off whenever. So I have to wait and see. Um, all right. Awesome. Andy here says, how could dumb American government? Oh, I think I know who this is. Hi, Batman. How are you? This is your new alt account. Um, allow the merger in the first place when they knew that AT&T can't pay them back. 150 billion is way too much. Um, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna, well, the thing is, the guy who was against um, who was against the AT and T buyout of Time Warner, the one who sued them, right? The, the the FCC guy who sued them or FTC guy, 
um, he's actually for this merger. So they're probably gonna have a bit of an easier time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Lord Slug says, does all this stuff affect JJ and his JL dark stuff? I don't think so. But JJ did in an interview with Collider today, come out and say that they are doing, that he's not directing Black Superman and that he wants to direct original content because he spent a lot of time adapting other content. So he's still going to be like adapting, doing all this DC stuff, but he's not going to be directing. That's what he's saying for right now. But then again, today is not really the day for that. You know, today is not really the day for that kind of announcement, right? They don't want, they don't know. They, they, they got to deal with one thing at a time. So I think it's kind of one of those things. Uh, all right. Uh, now Marcus here says, isn't Comedy Central under Viacom? Doesn't Paramount own them too? Are you talking about South Park? Well, South Park Studios is something that's been licensed for Comedy Central. And they, they, you know, they have a deal with them, but I do believe that they own their, they own the, the content themselves. That's why SouthParkStudios.com will be the one to run the episodes online after they air on, on Comedy Central. And as far as I know, they're not tied to uh, Comedy Central or Paramount. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with everything. It's going to be pretty fascinating. Um, Ambassadorio here says, I think uh, JJ might do well with original content. Let him play and get away from the rebooting. Yeah. Let, let him play. I mean, like, you know, it's like, I like doing, you know, I, I don't like it. I don't, there's a lot that I don't like to cover because a lot of people out there, you know, they all cover the same content. We all kind of keep doing the same thing. It may not be the best thing on the planet. So maybe, maybe let's not do that. You know what I mean? Maybe let's not do that at all. Um, all right. So here's the thing, guys. We've been on for an hour. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna drop the link. We'll take about four or five people uh, real quick. Uh, keep it uh, keep it pretty, uh, pretty streamlined and uh, have the content that you have. Have a topic real quick. We'll discuss it two minutes, you know, two to five minutes. We'll keep it keep it small uh, and then we can go from there. But as also, uh, if you guys want to support the channel, because right now, apparently Super Chats are having a massive issue. So I don't know if anything has come on in. Uh, streamlabs.com forward slash streambuck theater forward slash tip would be the great way to do that. And YouTube doesn't take the 30%. So this is a way to uh, kind of uh, unscrew me over. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on here. All right. <laughs> Andrew. Hello. Are you, sir, were a troublemaker the other night. Did I do that? Yeah. So tell me real quick, what happened with that nonsense? Uh, Were you being threatened to go to jail for spamming Snyder related content on Twitter? Well, first off, I don't do that stuff. Uh huh. Okay. So why did someone threaten to send you to jail? Well, because apparently like it's classic, uh, what people think of Snyder, all that nonsense. Yeah. But I can't send you to jail over an opinion. I mean, this is America. Yeah, that's what I said too. This is America. Can't America. can't go to jail. We have free speech here. I mean, well, within reason, I guess. But it's not like you're out. I mean, like, were you like, you know, threatening to like line somebody up against the wall and shoot them? Was that the, that wasn't happening? No, of course. Yeah, not. so you should have been fine. Yeah, so, <laughs> but it's so good now that I've heard from that person. Yeah. All right. So okay. So then, real quick, then what's on your mind for tonight? What's uh, what's your thoughts on this whole thing? Well, um, to be, uh, it, it's crazy. Some of the stuff I agree with, but on the other hand, I think like this could be a good thing. I mean, like from that interview you, you showed with David, I mean, you could, I get what you were saying, but you could tell that it looks like he wants to show creative freedom. Well, he says he wants to work with creators. Like, yeah, and I think that's, that's um, uh, that's in direct response to Keylar. And yeah. how and how Keylar was uh, was being looked at was being treated like he was an anti creator when he wasn't, but he's he's trying to put the business first. Which uh, you know, hey, look in Hollywood, everyone's <laughs> got an ego. I mean, he brews Christopher Nolan's ego, and the reason why they got mad was because Nolan pushed them to put Tenant out at oh, a time yeah, when they should that. not have put Tenant out, and they put it out, and they took a bath on it, and then they took the blame, and then Nolan got mad. And the, the reality of it is that Nolan, you know what, like he's got his own little part to play in this, that he refused to acknowledge that he refused to take credit for yeah, and I mean, own up responsibility for. I mean, it went so bad. Nolan went, hasta la vista, baby. 
Uh, he'll, you know, here's the thing. He'll be back. He'll be back. Right. Yeah. So uh, he, he's not going to go anywhere because no one else is going to fund Nolan right now. No one. Unless, unless he does a tentpole movie. That's it. Unless he does a tentpole movie, they'll fund Nolan. But I don't think, um, look, Dunkirk did okay, but like not, you know, I mean, like TDK since, numbers or well, even. I mean, ever since Nolan did Batman, he hasn't been, haven't gotten a big hit. Well, I mean, yeah, Inception came out in between The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises, and that did well, pretty well. True. Um, but then again, he had the Batman hype preceding it, and then he had the Batman hype to look forward to. So there's a fair amount of that. Um, I do think that, uh, um, let's see, uh, awesome. Andy here says tenant failure is the reason why AT&T decided the hybrid. Really? Merger. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Uh, and then even awesome. Andy here says even interstellar interstellar underperformed interstellar just had the problem with that third act was terrible. Yeah, uh, the, the third act was, you know, we can, we can debate the merits of, you know, the Kubrick esque approach to that third act, but whatever. Yeah, trying to be uh, up, up until space, then it was good it was an amazing movie one of the best i'd ever seen and then it gets to that third act and it's like <laughs> like nolan just did a bump of like terrible cocaine and like wrote this like this final act himself and he was like no one can see it but me sort of thing yeah uh, uh dr hockey i i doubt he would make another batman film because he said dark knight rises was the conclusion oh yeah why would he go back to that right i mean like really uh you know like again kind of like kind of like zach why would he go back to batman why would he go back to that when he he mm. concluded it he wrapped it up you know well after uh, i would agree if they if we didn't have those teasers they had, he had at the end dude that was all done but he trolled him he trolled him he knew that they were pushing back on him so he trolled him oh you mean like a ha ha we got yeah you. We got yeah you. he's like he's like no he knew he knew that like they weren't going to do anything else so he added all this stuff in as a subtle fuck you Right, like I'm gonna get the fan base riled up. They're gonna want more, and they're gonna make your life a living hell until you, until this whole thing goes away. And guess well, what? Here it, it is, like two that. months later. Oh, it is like that, hundred percent like that. Well, I don't uh, see it like that. Well, you're not. I'm just. I'm telling you. I think you're looking at it the right way then, because it's. I mean, he's already admitted that like they're anti Snyder. They push back at everything, you know. And he's like, which is kind of screwed up. Which is screwed up. So what? Why? Why wouldn't he passively, aggressively respond by putting in teasers at the end of something? uh knowing exactly what the response would be you know that was the whole point the whole point was that it did these things in order to get people uh to pay attention and it worked and that's only going to add more eyeballs on army of the dead that's true i mean my dad's gonna be seeing that later to this week yeah real quick here dean um holes Affle. sorry if i'm saying that wrong man says uh says interstellar made 700 million that really? way but wow. that's but that's including home video sales by the way that's including home video sales. So it is not the best, um, but it's still, I still mean made money. Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, man, I got more people to get to and I got to wrap this up pretty quick. So uh, thanks a lot, Andrew. And we'll, we'll talk again soon. All right. All right. See ya. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. We've got uh, real quick diving into Arkham gaming, man. What is on your mind? Um, I have like, um, I, I like reading comic books and this gets me a little worried about like, if they're splitting up the comic book division and the DC games division, that like, are we going to like? Because my friend likes buying comic books and he does not like getting digital because people have a preference. Like I hate digital. I don't like reading digital. I like physical copies. Do you think we will? Do you think there's anything to be worried about with the games and the comic book division? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I think like, um, is the comic book is, is comic books being, I, I think it's being included, right? DC um, comics is being included. I'm, I'm assu assuming because like, um, uh, I know they, uh, the comic books, uh, up their price. So like people are, people are saying that nothing's going to happen to DC comics, but the only thing they're going to do is probably just if, if it's, be included and it's going to be sold off to another another person like the people say it might just be the them just raising the price like yeah well i mean i don't know yet about that um you know apparently what i think is going to happen ultimately is uh dc comics like comics in general have been declining in sales there's you know physically speaking at least and we don't know digital numbers at all 
Uh, I know you don't want to read them digitally, but that's probably going to be where a lot of it goes. Um, I mean, it's going to take a little bit to get there, but that, that's something that they're going to have to reevaluate. And there has been rumors about uh, about the licensing off of these characters individually. So not licensing off the DC brand, but like going, hey, Marvel could come in and just go like, we want to license Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and we want to merge them into the Marvel Universe uh, for this particular run. And I think I think a lot of people will be really, really, really furious at that. If you my oh, honest opinion, that 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 would start a comic book war. Like, it, like, uh, like how I see this situation. I don't think anything bad's going to happen to the comic book because, like, um, I like um, oh, a lot of like I I don't know the sales of comic books or anything like that. I don't work there or anything like that. But like, I heard. It's doing very good right now because I know, like, when they were doing, like, Future State, it, it went very down because, like, no one liked it. Uh, so, like, how I see this situation is I feel like we'll still get comic books. I, I think we'll still get video games. Like, why wouldn't we get video games with DC? Like, like wherever it's branched. Because, like, if they're splitting it up, wouldn't they be selling off the property for a different co- video game company to be uh, using that asset to uh, make the game all they care about right now is making money like that's all they care about so it's going to be whatever is going to make it easiest and if some company comes along with a good enough pitch and they can make them they can make them the, the work and they all get paid that's what they're going to go for and that's okay. what i think they're going to be doing I, I just don't see them like you know, right now we just don't know. It's day one. It's just day one. And this whole deal isn't even going to go through until next year. So, you know, I, I we can't over speculate yeah. right now. Uh, definitely. I, but I don't, yeah, I like Warner brothers games. I don't want the games to get all messed up and whatnot. I would hope that in that case, something like Ubisoft would come on in and take over Do because think, Ubi or um, EA or EA might, I don't yeah. know. I hope not EA. I hope not EA. I don't like EA. Like, um, Ubisoft is pretty good. I like the Assassin's Creed game. Like, uh, I'm playing Valhalla. It's very, it's very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm working my way through Valhalla right now too. I know they just released the DLC expansion, but I'm gonna hold off on that one for a while. Yeah, like, um, do you think they're going to cancel Gotham Knights and Suicide? No, it's it's too close to coming out. I think the biggest thing with Gotham Knights is they're afraid of it being like a games as a service model, kind of like um, uh, the Marvel Avengers game that came out last year that kind of crashed and burned. <laughs> Yeah. So I think they're kind of worried about that. And also Gotham Knights would be something that they would need to release closer to the release of the Batman or Suicide Squad. I yeah. think um, I think uh, the Batman would be a better would be a better marketing tie in. And that is something uh, that I, I think that they would do. So we're gonna have to wait and see on that one. But hey, man, I'm gonna let you go. I got a couple of people to get through here. And um, uh, and then I got to I got to get uh, back to doing my taxes. Okay. Uh, so all right, man. Well, thank you very much. We'll talk again soon. Arkham. Have a good one, buddy. Bye. Thank you. All right. Keep the train on a moving. We got Geek Studios here. What's going on, hey, Geeks? Hey, Matt. Not How you doing, much. man? What, what's on your mind? What do you think will happen to the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie sequel? Oh, I, no. it's going it, to it's going to continue. I mean, it, you know, I mean, look, the the, you know, Adult Swim, right? Everything they've done down there in Georgia is inexpensive as all hell. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like Aqua Teen is not an expensive movie to make. You know, it's it's really yeah. not going to be that expensive of a movie to make. And they know that if it doesn't work out, they can put it back on uh, Cartoon Network and, and the Adult Swim lineup and people out there are going to really like it. Uh, personally, I did not care for the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie that came out a, a number of years ago. Um, I think, what, 15 years ago is when that one came out. I didn't care about, mm-hmm. I didn't really like it. I liked the show, but I felt the movie was like, it, they took the, you know, it's it's kind of like a C-Lab 2021 movie. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it'd be funny for like a few minutes because it, these are short vignettes, right? There's nothing yeah. that's really like gonna keep it going. Now you look at something like, let's say the Metalocalypse movie, and that's something I'm really excited for because I'm there was enough of a that. narrative there with Brendan Smalls and making that show that you could keep it going for an hour plus more Nathan explosion, hell yeah. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> just maybe, maybe we get some more Doctor Roxo, right? We get some more like I, I like so. cocaine. You know, I think they're gonna really and they're gonna complete the story. They're gonna give us probably a solid finale to that. And I mean, again, that kind of animation is pretty inexpensive. 
So I'm mm -hmm. definitely uh, I'm down for that. And that is the kind of stuff that I think they should focus on. And it's funny you mentioned like the animated side of things. Did you I was going to bring this up. Did you hear about what uh, Dan Harmon is doing now? Yeah, I saw that, but I forgot to talk about it with Brian oh, only if he's streaming. Yeah, it's uh, let me see if I can find it here. I'll bring it up real quick here. I was uh, Dan Harmon is making the first blockchain animated series as Fox embraces crypto. So Fox oh, wow. is launching. So Fox is launching an NFT company to help art meet technology. Um, as uh, uh, as the Rick and Morty creator readies Crapopolis, an animated comedy set in ancient Greece that will break new technological ground. So yeah, I mean, like they're they're creating an NFT uh, animated series from Dan Harmon, the co-creator of Rick and Morty. It's like it's insane here, um, and so it's gonna have groundbreaking. What does that mean, groundbreaking technology? Right. I so it's it's anything anything in animation. It's <laughs> are they gonna. I mean, if, look, if they're gonna figure out a way to use blockchain as a way to do animation, I don't quite know how it would work, but okay, um, and. Uh, you know, I mean, it says here that Harmon is making a crapopolis, an animated comedy set in mythical ancient Greece that is centered on a flawed family of humans, gods and monsters that tries to run one of the world's first cities without killing each other. It sounds like a funny enough concept. And I think Harmon is is pretty is pretty funny. And um, mythology is really interesting to go into. Yeah, well, no, and I and I do have I like Greek mythology. Uh, I do like. Uh, but this isn't this isn't like twenty this isn't like Disney Fox this is Fox Fox you know uh, this oh, is Fox wow. Corporation that's doing Disney. this yeah no 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 it's not because they they bought the they bought the assets but they didn't buy the name that's why they rebranded uh, 20th Century Studios uh, instead oh, of uh, okay. 20th Century Fox and like yeah. oh that I mean but then again then again they still have the Fox Network and uh, but they are but they did say today that they are uh, canceling the fox television channel in the uk it's been active for 17 years they're they getting rid of that disney channel down there recently i hope and a lot they're of gonna, uh, disney network they shut down because of disney plus yeah well i mean and they are and again they're moving all that content over to uh to disney plus as well so you know i mean obviously that is going to be again this is what we're seeing here what we're seeing is we're seeing all of these companies reorg uh how they do traditional broadcasting right television mm -hmm. and television is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually it's gonna it's gonna go the hell away because more and more people are gonna want to go over to these other um to, they're gonna start doing it in other ways and I audiences will flock there yeah well at this point now i'm i'm you know paying out um a lot for streaming services so i mean it kind of like it kind of kind of balances itself out so to speak but mm -hmm. uh but think about it like this uh people might pay for three services so you figure disney uh because they got kids netflix and then what's going to be that third one right that yeah. third one is really what people need to strive for right now it's amazon but see amazon's kind of its own thing because amazon allows you uh -huh. to have the two-day the two-day free shipping yeah. so it's like you get a service can I hear about what Amazon is doing now? They oh yeah, MPM. the nine, yeah, the nine billion dollar offer for MGM. Uh, that's wild because that's going to give them access to the Bond franchise and, and um, uh, Tom Blue's films that he made for MGM too. Wait, who? Tom Blue's. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. On yeah, yeah. heaven and yeah. Well, and Disney right now has Titan AE. They have Titan AE, don't they? Like they I have the rights that. to yeah, that. They like, do. yeah, they do. Where the fuck and is that movie? Bring that I'm back. It's been twenty that. years. I love, I love Titan that AE. Movie. It's a great flick. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think Amazon again. Amazon buying MGM. Why is that? Because they're going to want to start putting these movies into cinemas, and they're going to need a distribution arm to be able to do that. Netflix did that with Army of the Dead. They worked a deal with Cinemark. They put it in uh, like they put it yep. in like 600, 600 theaters. So they're doing that. And then they've also purchased the Egyptian in Hollywood be and, and another theater. Netflix owns another theater. So they're buying all these theaters up. They're going to start putting their they're going to start getting into the distribution mm -hmm. game because that is where you know people are still going to justify paying for entertainment. It doesn't matter where it's at. They're going to justify it. And so this is what we're going to see here. Um, mm -hmm. So you know it's uh, should be pretty um, interesting to see what's going to be happening. 
Uh, <laughs> I knew it. TW here was like, who wrote Titan AE? And I'm all like, I'm all like, I, I know the answer, but I wanted to Google it just to make sure before I answered. And it's Joss Whedon. I knew it. No, Roosevelt here. Bond is not Sony. Sony um, licensed Bond, uh, Casino Royale, uh, Quantum, Spectre, Skyfall. Those are those are Sony, right? Uh, no yeah. Time to Die is, I believe, Universal. Universal is putting up the money for that. But uh, so it's entirely possible that M that the the Bercoldis, Everything or Nothing Productions, retains the rights, and that MGM doesn't have. But I know doesn't MGM have like. They got a lot of stuff. I, I got to look to see you. They have United Artists, so a bunch of United Artists movies as well. I forgot about them. It's been long yeah. since I saw their logo. So, I mean, I, MGM is, they, well, MGM's got a lot of television too. I think they have like the Stargate franchise and they got a bunch of other franchises as well. So it's not just, uh, and I think, and I think if it's Amazon, they want like the Expanse does really well for them. Having the Stargate franchise on there as well, would be really good for them because a yeah. lot of people out there really really do love uh all that stuff if you guys want to get more information on that um uh popcast the popcast on youtube um uh brian and shane man those guys do some excellent fucking work they're great guys I about them. they uh yeah they they're big they're big sci-fi nerds they do a lot of sci-fi content and um i would recommend checking them out they got some great content oh yeah and, and then also nick one here says that M uh, mgm has the epics channel that's right and so Pink they Panther got they own. And which else? Pink Panther. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I would I would be okay. But you can't I mean, you can't replace Peter Sellers and even Steve Martin in the two movies weren't wasn't bad. You know, wasn't bad at all. Mm -hmm. Uh but all right, man, I'm gonna let you go. I got a couple people to get to real quick and then I got a jet. Thank you very much, man. I'm, I'm sure I'll see you probably over on Enosh's stream as I jump over yep. there for a few minutes to yell at him. All right. <laughs> we'll, I'll see you later, buddy. Have a good one. Okay, guys. And we've got uh, we got Shidoko here. How's it going, Shidoko? Hey, dude, it's going pretty all right. Um, I want to make this quick since I know I heard you have to do your taxes. So, yeah, that's very important. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for an email uh, with some information. And I'm like, would you just hurry up and send me some goddamn information? <laughs> I need to know. I need to know what I can write off here because uh, this is very important. Uh, to Indeed, the but yeah, so let's make this quick. Um, All right. Yeah, one thing I was thinking about throughout this whole thing is just the jobs, and to me, that's the most disheartening thing about this. Is like, you know, like, of course, all these mergers, you know, some jobs, you know, big and small, they're going to be, you know, cut loose. You know, some people are going to inevitably lose their job, and to me, that's the saddest part about this if i'm being honest you know just hearing what might yeah. happen with comics the games or whatever uh, you know i just wish the best for everyone whoever maybe because i see some people on twitter like oh i just got hired like by warner brothers and then i hear this and i'm like oh no you know well we'll see what happens but no i've heard that i've heard that too um and there's um you know like i mean under keelar a lot of people lost their jobs under the reorg uh less than a year later under another reorg you're going to see people losing their jobs and it is sad. It's really sad and it's unfortunate. And I think the bigger problem that we're going to see here is really going to be, um, you know, where people find themselves because the ecosystem in Hollywood, uh, is shifting, right? So it's like production is still happening there for like television and stuff, but it's also like London and New York and Vancouver, BC and Louisiana and uh, North Carolina and, uh, Atlanta is a big one, right? So there's hubs popping up in a, a bunch in Albuquerque because Netflix actually, do you know, Netflix bought a studio in Albuquerque? I was not aware of that. I have said this before. I mean, this too. I mean this too. If you are an actor, like not right now, but like wait a little bit, as soon as we get out of COVID and start ramping shit up, you're going to start seeing them like really doing a lot of shit in Albuquerque because New Mexico in the late two thousands was a big place because they had the best tax incentives. And so if Netflix is coming on into a place in Albuquerque and they're going to start because Albuquerque is not the most inexpensive, but it's also the not the most expensive place to live. So if, if they start building out Albuquerque as this like new uh, Mecca for for creation of content for filming and stuff uh, out there, that's going to be massive. That's going to be massive. And we're going to see a lot of people. And that actually gives um, me a little hope because at least I would like things to be spread out a little more, give people more opportunities. So okay, I, well, I can. Yeah, sorry. Let me confirm here. It's like it's like sorry. They didn't. They bought. Like, it was like an old studio property. I think it's not like they bought a studio. It's like they bought the building. I think, not like the company. Mm. So there's that. Bell here says everyone. I know. I know. Enosh is on. He hit me. Usually I go later <laughs> than this, 
Usually I go later, but like I wanted to talk about this earlier. I didn't want to sit on it for like six hours. I guess so, with that, know. yeah, I, I'm just going to let you go right now. I got more people. I, you know, yeah, right. well, I got well, I got one more guy to get to, and I kept him for the last uh, for good reason. And, uh, uh, right. <laughs> uh, you know, but here, Andy Handy. Oh, boy. It's like that name. Uh, this is more blue and green screen movies. Well, if they build, if they build the volume technology, which uh, is not only going to be something that Lucasfilm has, the, but it's going to go to they're going to make it open to a lot of people. I mean, that's going to be technology to have. If if Netflix, let's say Netflix has like a ten thousand square foot warehouse, right? And in that warehouse, it is just wall to wall LED screens, right? LED wall to wall LED panels, and it makes the volume, and it's this massive massive set they could build so much stuff in there and they could make you feel they could shoot it like you are really on location because that is what they did for mandalorian they literally went to these different locations and they shot the real world footage for that for that composite and then they would play that in the back or they they would digitize it using the unreal 4 uh, game engine and then they would digitize it and then they would build it out and so while they were shooting the show if, if they wanted to alter the lighting they just turn a dial and it just rotates the image and so it rotates the time they can rotate the time of day so they get a different time of day so have natural lighting have, you know have it look like that and they can then go you know what i want that mountain back there higher i want this valley i want this here i want this there and they go and they you know and they build it right there on the spot they can do all of this stuff they can create these worlds right there from someone's laptop right while they're on set and then when it goes into the edit then they have the composite already done that they can just you know just merge it in relatively seamlessly yeah like i, I agree miss, with tw here it's dope yeah i will miss the practicality of some movies but i do admit that is pretty cool technology i, it I is mean the, like, the practicality is going to always have to be there though like that no matter what yeah. right the practicality is going to have to be there because uh one of the issues that we've seen is like look even elements of mandalorian were outside elements of cassian and are shooting outside you know uh, obi-wan is shooting outside you're always going to have to have a lot of those kind of there are going to be always elements that go outside but it should lower the budget a little bit and that's going to be the key thing going forward here is i think yeah. going to be trying to find a way to, to manage the budget to where it's not going to end up being something that is just like righteously over the top because we can't the st the industry can't afford another justice league does that make sense <laughs> uh no absolutely it always comes down to money it, it comes does. down to money 400 yeah. million and i mean like the whole thing the whole shebang yeah right like everything that happened that is a case study in what not to do it's a great movie i love the movie i'm happy it exists apparently it's coming to canada in 4k in july it's mm -hmm. coming to the uk next week still no america what the fuck warner yeah i'm take my for, goddamn money yeah so waiting for the blu-ray i i just wanted because i canceled H, uh, hbo max i'm like all right i'm waiting but you know whenever yeah. it happens i guess <laughs> but anyways yeah let's get to the next guy and you know whenever we could talk again all right man well thanks a lot shudoko have yourself a good one man and we'll, we'll talk again soon have a good one all right thank you very much okay guys so finally tonight you guys know him you guys are okay with him you know Anthony doing, Chabot, man? I'm good. I am good. I just I saved you to the end because you're always kind of you're always you're always here, and I appreciate Thank that, you. sir. Thank you, Matt. How you doing? Is that, I'm pretty good. Is that your mom in the background? Yeah. Anthony, Hi. I don't want to be on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. You know, sorry about that. Just fixing up the sheets. Anyway, sure, how you doing, sure. Matt? I'm I'm good. Do you want to go? Do you want to like? Wow. You want to like turn off the camera? No. 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 Well, I mean, I'm like, sorry. if your mom's not comfortable. Oh, you want to talk? You want? I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. No, no, no. Uh, it's okay. It's it's okay. I can't because I can't. Like you gotta. Yeah, you could turn. On, okay, if she's gone, she's gone now. You're good. Uh, I'll, I'll call you're you good, when, when we're done. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. We'll keep it quick. We'll keep it quick. But I just want to make sure, like your mom looked kind of embarrassed. I felt kind of bad. No. But it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I get it, dude. I had I had a long conversation with my mom tonight, just catching up with her. You know, I'm felt good. good. To, I'm doing good. Everything. I posted a YouTube video. That's good, man. That's good. Uh, yeah. what'd you, what'd you, what'd you, uh, post about uh, mental health? Oh yeah. It's always a fun topic. I mean, well, not, yeah. not really a fun topic, but it's a, it's yeah. a topic nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. I mean, what do you think about this whole merger situation? Wow. Was, wow. I think they're going to restore the DC universe. They're going to do the right thing and restore the, the Snyderverse. I, well, I don't think so. I don't think so. And, and, uh, it's not, again, it's not to say that I don't want it. Cause I always have to reiterate that point. 
it's money. money. They, 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 the AT and T ran out of money. And right. that's why they spun this whole thing off. And, and Discovery is like, yeah, sure, they want to work with the IPs that they got. They realize that that's going to make money, mm -hmm. but they've also got to like mitigate budgets. Now, I could now I could I could argue I could say that it's it's possible that if if Zach is pitching, you know, the the nightmare stuff for uh, for Justice League Two, then that would be lower on the budget. We were talking about the volume technology here a minute ago, but mm -hmm. see today though, Zach admitted today that he was uh, assigned by Warner Brothers to write the final chapter in the 300 mm. trilogy. Wow. And he wrote this story that was completely unrelated to that. And Alexander the Great. I was Alexander the Great, yeah. And then and then Warner said no, and they didn't want it. And it's like, yeah, because you were hired to do something and you did something, you know, and then you, you wonder why they get antagonistic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like I, I was kind of laughing at that. I'm like, Warner's isn't at fault here for turning this down. I saw all these comments are Warner's yeah, it's a masterpiece. I got it on, on DVD in storage. Which one? 300. The first yeah. Movie. I love 300, man. I even like rise of the empire. The second movie, right? Rise of the uh, empire. I never seen rise of the empire. It was rise good. Of the empire is a prequel. It was, well, it's, it's not just a prequel. It's actually a prequel, a concurrent, a parallel and a sequel. It mm. kind of runs around everything. So you get this kind of, you get ancillary information that kind of gives you more of the overall story. And well, I liked it quite a bit. It's in 2014, but it yeah. is uh, that I would like to do a future shout out to you, Matt, y'all, with my thoughts and opinions on my YouTube channel. Thank you. Well, I'll do it in the near future, but right now I got a whole bunch of trailer reactions I have to do. I have to do the Snake Eyes trailer, the, the, uh, oh. hmm. Hitman bodyguard in tonight. I'm gonna to be doing the parts forever. Nice man, cool. I haven't seen the Snake Eyes trailer yet. I need to go check that out. But 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 Matt, if you if you get a chance, look at my video. Okay. I uh, did you tag me on Twitter with it? I think yeah. you did. Okay, I saw something about that. Yeah, I was busy mm -hmm. today. Uh, but all right, I'll, I'll take a look at it, man. All right, no problem. You have a good night, Matt. Right, you, you too, man. Tell your mom sorry. It's okay. <laughs> all right, uh, Anthony. You guys know him. You guys love him. All right, everybody. I believe that's going to wrap it up. We're rocking it at a cool one hour and 30 minutes minus that three minute intro. If you guys came in late to the party, you might have missed this one. According to super sleuther scooper Mikey Sutton, um, Hamada is uh, is looking to uh, to get the hell out. Apparently, he's putting some feelers out there and he is unsure about his job security after today's announcements. But if you work at Warner Brothers, yeah. That could be a thing. Also, real quick, I did see this one on Twitter. I just want to point this out today, of course, is Bill Paxton's birthday. He unfortunately passed away a few years ago, and we are lesser as a result. Bill Paxton is one of the greats, a fun character actor, just a fun guy in general. And uh, you know what? Rip Bill Paxton and go watch one of his movies, Aliens, Predator 2, The Terminator. I would argue Aliens because he's got the best line about nuking it from orbit. A, uh, you know, an iconic line from an iconic guy. And he is definitely missed here. Um, so I will talk to you guys uh, tomorrow, probably back at my normal time uh, later in the night around 11 p.m. Pacific Standard. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Have yourself a great one. Be sure to smash that like, support the channel any way you can. Tell your friends. I make jokes. I'll see you guys. Bye.